Thank you very much and good morning, ministers, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. I'm delighted to return to Edinburgh and to take part in Scotland's International Climate Justice Conference. Uh, as has been mentioned, it was a great pleasure to come here in 2011 and deliver the Magnuson Lecture at Glasgow Caledonian University. And you know, when you reach my stage in life, and you're not only a grandmother, you're also an elder, it licenses you to be bossy and to challenge people. And it's actually a good thing and a, an enjoyable thing to do. I mean, I'm getting used to it now. Um, <laughs> but um, I did pose a serious challenge. And uh, I'm very glad that Scotland has taken up the challenge. Indeed, yesterday evening at a very enjoyable dinner um, hosted by Susan Rice of the business community here in Scotland, I found myself in a challenging mode again. And I think that the business community also uh, can play a huge role. Uh, Scotland um, has shown um, leadership, and it's very clear in the speech this morning um, by video um, of First Minister Alex Salmon, and indeed also um, in the address given by Minister uh, Paul Wheelhouse. Um, I do recall attending the launch of the Climate Justice uh, Fund together with the First Minister and the then Minister for Environment and Climate Change, Stuart Stevenson, and the Chair of the Scottish Human Rights Commission, um, Alan Miller. And it's good to see that some of the beneficiaries of the Climate, Scotland Climate Justice Fund are represented at the conference today. And I was delighted to hear the First Minister's announcement this morning that the Scottish Government will double this fund with a further three million being allocated to support projects increasing communities' resilience to the impacts of climate change. This is really very welcome. I agree that the, the, the amount is not huge, but this is new money for resilience against climate change. In other words, it's a very good practical example of what developed countries can do and should do more. And for that, I'm, I'm very pleased. I'm also glad to see a number of friends from the Global South who will be speaking on some of the panels later today. There's now an opportunity for the Scottish Government to bring its commitment and roadmap on climate justice into Scotland's first National Action Plan for Human Rights, due, as you probably know, to be launched this December. The integration of climate justice into the National Action Plan would enhance the leadership Scotland is giving on climate change as an issue that affects people and their rights, which, whilst demonstrating the value of a solutions-oriented approach based on equity and justice. In the Mary Robinson Foundation Climate Justice, we're working on an initiative with the World Resources Institute based in Washington called the Climate Justice Dialogue. The Climate Justice Dialogue aims to mobilize political will and creative thinking to shape an equitable and ambitious international climate agreement to be concluded in 2015. We're facilitating a global dialogue on issues of equity and justice in the context of climate change, while creating a strong evidence base to support and build momentum for an equitable outcome. There are opportunities for all of you to join this dialogue. Already, my foundation is working with Glasgow Caledonian University under the guidance of its principal, Pamela Gillies, to create the GCU Climate Justice Research Hub, which brings together peer-reviewed articles on climate justice from around the world and will serve as an online meeting place for researchers and academics interested in this subject. Dr. Tassin Jaffrey and her team at GCU have compiled over a thousand entries of climate justice research conducted over the past 10 years. The research hub will be launched at the conference later today, and I congratulate Glasgow Caledonian University on taking the initiative to develop this important repository of information which will be an invaluable resource for all of us working on climate justice. The climate justice dialogue that I mentioned is guided by a high-level advisory committee which includes leaders from politics, science, business, civil society, and academia. Indeed,